<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who camp, hike, etc. What is the scariest slash most disturbing thing that has happened to you in the woods? 25 years ago or so. I saw eyes in the darkness of the trees when I shined a flashlight out. It seemed kind of high up. They were red reflecting. We also had sticks and rocks occasionally thrown into our camp. Nothing big, and it was directed at the fire. Eventually it stopped, and we went to bed. There were four of us. I'm a light sleeper, and so is my dad. We both woke up to footsteps and a really bad stink about 5A.M. My dad shook the side of the tent and yelled, get the duck out here. Whatever it was, it ran off. Cowlitz Country, Washington. I live in a rural town surrounded by mountains and forests, so camping is almost a weekly event, even in the winter. The one I can't shake is when me and a friend broke off from our group of other 16 to 19 year olds to camp at a better fishing spot about a mile away. We only brought one tent for the group, so we built a lean-to against a large boulder in a clearing. I couldn't sleep because I had the feeling that something was watching us. I assumed it was a mountain lion, which isn't that big of a deal considering their behavior, so I threw some more logs on the fire. I looked up from the fire, and under the light of a full moon, there was a man standing at the edge of the clearing, about 80 yards away. I was frozen and couldn't take my eyes off him while he assumedly stared back. He walked off in the opposite direction after about a minute or two. I doubt he had any ill intentions, but I sat there holding my friends 357 the whole night. So, not me, but my brother took my dog for a walk in the woods one night. We live on a farm in the UK, and the woods start about 15 meters from our front door. Around 10 PM, my brother returns, saying he's lost the dog. Great. He immediately explained to me that his phone died in the middle of the woods, and he had the dog, Chester, right by his side. As he looked down, a circular beam of light surrounded his feet for a split second before it shot off in one direction. The dog was completely gone. So after he hurried back home to get me, I went out into the woods to find him, and about a 20 second walk into the darkness, I found Chester behind a big tree. The weirdest part was that he did not seem like his usual self. He was walking at a snail's pace with his tail between his legs. He's run around these woods on his own at night most of his life with no fear, but this time he was almost trembling. He walked past me into the house and laid down on his bed, and that was it. I went camping with my roommates once. We were a ways off the main road and had the entire campsite to ourselves. We went to bed in a six-person tent and woke up at around 2 a.m. hearing scratching noises around our tent. It sounded as if someone was running their hand along the side of our tent as they walked around it. I sort of woke up, looked around at my roommates who were freaking out, decided I didn't want to deal with a possible axe murderer, and went back to sleep. That morning, we found footprints that weren't ours circling our tent. It was disturbing, to say the least. I have a story about something I heard that scared the shit out of me. I was on a student exchange program to the US, specifically New Mexico. I'm not from the US, BTW. And near the end of my stay, my host family, the dad, mom, me, and their two daughters, decided to go camping. When it was getting dark, 16-year-old me and the two daughters decided to go climb a tree a bit away from the campsite, and when we reached the top of the tree, we stopped dead in our tracks because of a sound I'll never forget. The youngest daughter, who was 14 years old, was calling my name, which is a typical Dutch name, so not something some New Mexican locals would just shout since they have trouble pronouncing it. The thing was, this girl was sitting just below me, not saying a word. We sat there as this thing, whatever it was, kept shouting my name in her voice for what felt like an eternity but was actually just five minutes. And when it stopped, we bolted back to the campsite, where mom and dad were sitting, just enjoying the evening. But when we told them, the dad's face became pale as a ghost and he immediately told us to grab our things because we were leaving, and five minutes later we were gone. To this day, I still have no idea what that was, and my dad never wanted to talk about it. I was living in Brazil, and a friend and I decided to do a one night out and back through mountainous rainforest terrain in one of the southern states. We mostly wanted to get some exercise and do a gear shakeout before going on a longer trip in Patagonia. The experience started out really tough. We were doing almost constant climbing, and it was hot. Humidity was near 100% through lush vegetation. Eventually we were pretty much in clouds and completely drenched from sweat and humidity. It was kind of hellish, soaked to the bone with no chance of drying out. Fortunately, at that altitude, it gets below freezing frequently at night, so there weren't many insects or animals, only birds. We hiked for probably 8 hours with little progress, it was slow going through tough terrain. In the early evening, 
We came to a flat spot, the first we'd seen in hours, and decided to make camp as it was starting to pour. I basically made camp in several inches of standing water. I was beat anyway, so I just sat in my tent reading. Around 3 a.m., I woke to a girl singing in the distance. The singing kept coming closer until she was singing right at our tents. She pushed past us, and the singing drifted off. She was singing, maybe a lullaby or children's song? About rain in Portuguese, but it sounded very strange. An hour later, I was woken up to the singing in the distance again. She was coming back towards us, singing the same rain song. As she passed us, I could hear a little exasperation in her voice. She continued singing and went back in the direction of the trailhead. Another hour later, I was again woken up by her singing as she was again coming back towards us, except now she was also crying. She continued to cry and sing as she moved past us for the final time. We woke up that morning, looked at each other, said what the duck was that? And then got on our way. It was very eerie at the time, and I don't have an explanation for it. We were in an extremely isolated location, and the trail was definitely only used by recreational hikers, so I really can't say why this woman was out wandering, singing, and crying at 3 a.m. I was in the army, it was pitch black. Me and my battle buddy had guard duty at Checkpoint Charlie. We were in a forest, in a temporary camp. I'm sorry. I do not know the English term for it, the time was around 1 a.m., and while I was looking through our night vision equipment, I could see what resembled four people trying to crawl into our encampment. I follow protocol and call up our guard commander, who tells me that there shouldn't be anyone out there but to keep observing them and report back. We were on a drill, and there weren't any planned situations this night. I give the night vision to my buddy, and he sees exactly the same. Four shapes, crawling very, very, very slowly in the direction of our trenches. The next step is to stop them. I update my guard commander about the situation and what I intend to do. I then get out of our trench and go to the edge of the camp, with my rifle drawn, and shout at them to stand up, with their hands above their heads, and identify themselves. There is no response. My buddy has been looking through the night vision the entire time and has confirmed to me that there is indeed someone out there. My guard commander comes running down with his pistol drawn and looks through the NVG, night vision glasses, that he had on himself. He confirms what I see, and the second he runs out there in anger to kick the shit out of them, they're gone. They didn't get up running, they just weren't there anymore. I can't, for the life of me, explain how, what, and why. I was out with seven friends in very rural Australia and had limited supplies after an incident back at camp, we were hiking to the nearest town by ourselves. A few hours into the hike, it starts getting dark. Like pitch black and dark, though the stars are extremely vibrant and beautiful. We kept following the small 4x4 trail we'd been on and came to a small clearing next to a small stream. We just sat down next to some rocks and drank a bit out of it when, all of a sudden, I got this weirdly nauseating butterfly feeling, like before you go on stage in front of a crowd or something. But it didn't feel bad or malicious, I asked the others, and they had it too, and that's when we saw it. A little bit further down the stream, there were hundreds or thousands of glowing orb things, all in different colors, just pulsating and glowing. It was so weird but mesmerizing, and we watched it till it kind of faded. And that's when it happened, that dread feeling like so many people described. I sat paralyzed in fear, too scared to move, or I'd just die or something. I looked at my friend, and her face said it all, it was completely pale, and her eyes looked hollow. It was honestly manic, and after that, in almost unison, we all jumped up and booked it out of there. I don't know what happened when those orb things disappeared, but it felt like the goosebumps lasted hours, and I felt cold as ice, it was 25-ish degrees Celsius that night. A few years ago, a group of friends and I went camping together. The campground we wanted to go to was full, so we ended up camping deep into the forest, several miles away from any other campers. Well, the first night, we woke up at about 2 in the morning to drum and sing. It sounded like a traditional Native American type of song and music. I don't know how to describe it, but I got the feeling that something was very wrong. It was like the feeling you get when something bad happens. And the sound didn't sound like it was coming from anywhere in particular but was just all around us. Anyway, we were completely freaked out and decided to sleep in our car. The next night, we decided to go see if we could find any other campers near us that may have made the noise. We literally saw no sign of life anywhere around us, and we were in a somewhat clear part of the forest, so if anyone was camped near us, we would have seen them. We were still freaked out but decided it was probably nothing, so we spent another night. That night we woke up at the same time again to loud music, but it sounded closer this time. We also felt like something was just wrong and were extremely freaked out. We were too freaked out to go to sleep, 
so we just stayed in our tent awake all night. The next day, when we woke up, we decided to pack up and see if the other campground was open, and it was. When we stayed there, nothing else happened. To this day, I really don't have an explanation for what that noise was. I don't understand how we could not have seen any other campers and why they would have played music in the middle of the night. We also weren't on tribal land. My best friend, who was one of the other campers, is Navajo, and she said the music was similar to music she heard in tribal dances and rituals. I'm still freaked out about the whole ordeal, and it's hard to explain, but my body was just telling me that something was very wrong when this was happening. I was 15 years old at the time and was playing airsoft in a super deep thicket of woods behind my house with three other friends. It was right on the brink of dusk and it started to rain a fair amount. We were super familiar with these woods, so we thought, so we didn't pay much mind to the lack of daylight or rain. After splitting up into two groups we agreed that one team of two would go into the thick of the woods where we'd built numerous foxholes and trenches to defend while the other team stuck to the less wooded area of the trail that worked its way through these woods. Well, I was on the latter team, so we started making our rounds up and down the trail to try and bring them out of the woods for a better angle of engagement. I had actually brought night vision goggles, we took airsoft a bit seriously, and was ahead of my partner on the trail surveying the area since we did know that some potentially aggressive wildlife did live out there coyotes, wild hogs, etc. Well, after walking maybe two to three hundred feet into the woods, I noticed some really strange movement ahead of us on the trail, maybe four hundred feet past the trail entrance now. It's big. Really big. At least six foot in stature. I immediately let my buddy know to hold tight so I could study it a little more before it noticed us. The weirdest thing about it all? I noticed it was bipedal once it ran into the woods. Right in the direction our other team was. We hauled ass. I mean we ran like I've never ran before and I was a pudgy 15 year old too. Once we finally got to the field clearing right before the trail entrance, we started scrambling for our radios and breath so we could get on the other frequency and tell them to get the hell out of Dodge. Well, say no more because minutes later our other two buddies come rushing out of there with urgency I didn't know they had. To say their faces were white as a ghost and scared shitless wouldn't be doing it justice. Once they finally were able to choke out a sentence, we were informed that not minutes after my partner and I's encounter on the trail, they had been in a foxhole, maybe 300 to 400 feet away, listening and looking for us. Only they had an encounter with our cryptid friend too. One of them had something, what I can only assume was the unknown creature, breathed down his neck as he sat faced away from it in the foxhole. He said he didn't get to see it, but he could certainly feel how big it was behind him. Not seconds after he squeezes their experience out, we hear the most guttural, nerve-grating screech come from the woods that, to this day, I have not felt a fear remotely close to, as well as not even being remotely able to identify it. We went to the woods the next day to see if we could find anything strange. We did. Deer. Lots and lots of mangled, dead deer. At least five of them within a mile. We left after seeing that, and while we did keep playing airsoft at that same location for many more months until I'd eventually moved from my childhood home, we never went back after dark that day. So, there was this house on the property of the camp. Beautiful house, nice wooden smell, it was great. During this time, all the troops around us gathered for a weekend up at the house. There were maybe six to seven troops gathered, we would be doing wooden car racing, etc. The house was split into two rooms, one for males and the other for females, and there were closet doors connected to each room. At the time, there were maybe 10 to 20 guys in one room and maybe 10 to 15 females. We would be sleeping on the floors with our sleeping bags. After brushing, me and the guys went back to their rooms. We were talking, and one of the kids said that this place was haunted and that the closet that leads into the girls' section was where someone was hanged. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I always had a strange feeling of the doorway. So much so, in fact, that I specifically put my sleeping bag across the other side of the room. There was also an air vent there, and I was afraid as well, so I then moved it into the middle. Even if I had to sleep in between two guys, I didn't mind it. That night, after the counselors shushed us to sleep, because, you know, guys, we talk for hours on end if we don't get told to sleep. It was around, maybe, 4.30. I awoke, my head facing towards the closet, when I noticed something going down. The closet door was slowly opening. I was kind of stunned. Girls shouldn't be peeping on guys. That's when I see a shadow, no bigger than six. It was crazy tall for its size. Now, the best I can describe from memory is like the color Vanta black. It was very blurry, but crisp until the middle. It slowly inched its way across the wooden floorboards. No sound, nothing. It just silently passed each kid as it went by. I didn't want this thing to see me, so I turned my head. 
It passed more kids, the more it went down. I was now trembling. I didn't know what it wanted. It kept moving slowly, passing a few kids ahead of me, and then it happened. The more it got closer, the more I felt dread. Not only did I feel dread, but I felt the air getting colder. And not just the physical feeling of cold, it felt cold in my insides. The air got more dry and cold, like liquid nitrogen. The greatest amount of that feeling happened when it passed me. I was maybe a few feet from the door, so when it went to the other entrance I was at, I'm not sh'ting you this, it was literally turning the doorknob. It pulled the door open and slowly exited before, strangely enough, shutting the door behind itself. That morning, we were getting up from bed and walking down the rickety old steps. One of the kids said did you guys see that shadow last night, and maybe four kids eyes widened. We all blurted yes. We talked about it for a short while, and let's just say, after that experience, everyone's sleeping bag was moved to the other side of the room. I went hiking out in the wilderness on the outskirts of Yuma and walked about 5 miles from my car to my campsite. I brought my usual hiking gear along with my AR-15 for protection against wild animals like coyotes or snakes. My firewood supply burned up just after the sun went down, so I went to bed at 18.30. I ducked around on my phone until 19.30, passed out, was woken up by a call from, our mutual friend, around 20.30, and fell asleep again. The next time I woke up, I could not move. I could hear rocks moving around outside and soft footfalls in the sand right outside my tent. I'd heard coyotes howling earlier, so I knew that's what these were. I was sleeping with my back to the wall of the tent, and one of the little duckers pressed his nose into my back and sniffed for a good three minutes. I had sleep paralysis again, and I couldn't even grab my rifle to shoot the ducker. The second thing happened a few hours later, at 0300 or something. This was a nightmare, not sleep paralysis this time. There are two sections of my tent that can be seen through. It had to be a dream, but I woke up and peered through the window, and I saw a young woman and a child sitting outside my tent on a small rise, not more than six feet away. I asked them who they were. The child was silent, but the woman declared, leave this place. They each made a horrifying face, and I was able to grab my rifle. I tried to shoot them because it dawned on me that something was terribly wrong, but the trigger wouldn't budge. She and the child stood at once and walked away into the shrub trees behind my tent. The woman walked on until I couldn't see her anymore, but the child passed out from under the moonlight into the shadow of the shrub tree, and because there was moonlight falling on the other side of the tree, I could watch her silhouette change shape. She became a gangly, bony freak, almost like a tall monkey. Absolutely silently, she rushed into my tent. I squeezed the trigger for all I was worth, and then she collided with my tent. In that instant, I actually woke up screaming and throwing a wild punch into the wall of my tent. I was sitting up. So my friend's grandpa has this cabin property up a canyon in Duchesne County, Utah, that had a fire burn through it a few years ago, and his cabin was lost. Now it's just a bunch of burnt trees with quaking aspen saplings popping up everywhere. Last summer, my friend and I went up there to camp because it's pretty out of the way and on private land. To get there, you have to go through a road blocked off by a locked gate, and everything is super overgrown getting there was tough. I say that because I want it to be clear that we were most definitely alone up there. Anyway, we found a spot to tent up above his cabin on the gravel road that circled the cabin. That night, while settling down, we heard a sound outside our tent. It wasn't a small animal, and it wasn't a four-legged creature, we'd heard them all night and ignored them. It sounded like two heavy boots walking on the road we were tenting on. It's easy to tell the difference between two feet walking and four feet walking. It went all around the tent and seemingly left. Feeling spooked, my friend and I grabbed headlamps and rifles, and we walked the perimeter of our camp. We didn't see or hear anything else. Needless to say, we slept by our rifles that night. I'm not sure how related it might be, but the property is around 30 miles south of the infamous Skinwalker Ranch, where the crow flies. We haven't been back since. A friend and I decided to go on a two-week road trip, from Kansas through Colorado, Utah, and all down the west coast. We camped the whole way and had an incredible time, other than occasionally having trouble finding campsites. One day, after a fun, gluttonous night in Portland, we decided to camp on Mount Hood. It was the middle of the summer, so we expected to see other campers on the mountain, even though it was a weekday. We had to drive pretty far up the mountain in search of a campsite because all of the ones towards the bottom were closed due to fallen trees or trees that would be falling if a strong breeze came through. I'm not really sure what that was about, but it was a beautiful mountain with natural spring water and clear rivers. We were excited to be there. We saw a couple of old men fishing on the way up and one family camping. They appeared to be Native Americans, and there were about five of them. I don't think these details matter, 
just describing in as good of detail as I can remember, we drive up quite a ways more before we find a nice private camp spot and set up camp for the night. We walk around, gathering wood, talking about the night in Portland, and setting up the tent. The time comes for us to go to bed, and my friend, Lucy, falls asleep. I'm still lying there, trying to fall asleep, when I hear footsteps and leaves crunching. This puts me on high alert since there weren't many people camping and none close by us. I lay there with my heart racing and listened. I begin to hear voices, and I try to nudge my friend awake, but she is pretty out and not really waking. I continue to listen, and I start to make out the voices and words. It's our voices, having the exact conversation we were just having around the campfire, not even an hour before. I didn't last long before silence returned. Needless to say, I had a very hard time sleeping that night. We have a family cabin near Sandpoint, Idaho. I have been spending summers there with my husband for nearly 20 years now. We go up there almost every weekend, sometimes staying for weeks at a time. Being in the woods and near the lake, I'm not a stranger to animals. I also grew up in the rural Midwest, in the woods, so I'm comfortable and not easily spooked by the woods at night. Last year, we went up for our usual weekend visit. I remember getting to the cabin and finding out my husband forgot and left my hiking boots on the porch of our home, and I was really pissed off since I had planned to spend the weekend hiking. All I had to wear the entire weekend was a pair of cheap sandals. That night, we got the kids tucked into bed, and we folded out the sofa sleeper where we sleep. My husband fell asleep, but I had a new book I was reading and decided to stay up and read it. It was around 1 in the morning when I heard what can only be described as screams. I jumped out of bed and ran to the door, and peeking my head out, I could tell the sound was just beyond our cabin. It was a new moon, and I couldn't see anything, but it was at most 20 feet from our cabin, just beyond the chain-link fence that separates our property from another. It was the sound of an animal being attacked. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and I held my breath. It was a coyote, and it was being straight up killed. There was no struggle, and that's what stood out to me. No rustling of grass, trees, or leaves no growling or snapping. Only the sounds of a coyote screaming and dying it went on for so long that I thought, was it struck in a trap? And I was debating on walking to the fence to see if I could help, but all I had were my stupid sandals to wear. No way was I stumbling around in the dark in the woods in sandals. Slowly, it finally died. And everything was quiet. I felt sick to my stomach because I've never heard an animal suffer and scream like that. And then I heard it. Something was on my property, something jumped our fence without a sound and was slowly walking along the property line. It was completely silent, but its footsteps, and they were clearly bipedal. It was like the most graceful human was walking, and I couldn't see a damn thing because it was pitch dark. There's no way a human could walk the woods of our property with no moon out and no flashlight and not fall or trip over stumps and brush. It didn't move fast and seemed to stop for a moment, maybe spotting me on the porch? And then quietly walk off. If you grew up in the woods, you know the difference between animals and humans walking in the woods. Two feet versus four makes a big difference. I was trying so hard to convince myself that maybe it was the coyote, maybe it got away, or maybe it was stuck in a trap. I asked the neighbors about traps, and they were 100% against them. They said they knew our family was in the dog business and would never put traps out since we often have our dogs with us. I don't know what killed the coyote. I've had a very strange experience while solo camping in an extremely familiar stretch of woods. I visit this area often, either camping or hiking. One weekend night, I set up camp about an hour before nightfall. I started a small cook fire about 20 yards from my camp, bears are extremely uncommon in this area. After I finished cooking, I tried reading my book before heading to bed, which is something I do often while camping. I had a very unusual feeling of uneasiness, something I had never felt out there before. I often camp in that exact spot, a small, dry section of ground in a creek bed. I found myself turning on my flashlight often and scanning around me. After doing this a half dozen times, I realized that I have never felt that uncomfortable looking for something that might be out there, like a kid scared of the dark. There have been plenty of times up in the NH White Mountains where I have heard animal noises and scanned with a flashlight, feeling much more calm and methodical while doing it and comfortable with the fact that I'm not alone in the wilderness. This was very different and difficult to describe. Unsure of why I have this feeling, I decided to just call it a night, get into my hammock, and go to sleep. Shortly after falling asleep, I woke up to a group of coyotes yapping and howling, it sounded like they had gotten a kill. I knew exactly what it was right after hearing it mention the direction and how far away they were. I wasn't unnerved by that sound in any way, as it is something I've heard many times. I calmly went back to sleep. About an hour or so after the coyote incident, I awoke again. 
I felt very disoriented at first, but I clearly heard distinct footsteps that were slow moving and heavy coming down the edge of the creek bed towards my cooking site. I was overtaken by so much dread and fear that I could not even move my hand to grab my handgun, which was literally up against my body in my hammock. I believe I was so fearful because of the distinct, human-like steps that I heard. Unlike the coyotes that woke me up before, this was an extremely uncommon occurrence. Whatever it was, I walked slowly and steadily to the cook site, stopped for a brief moment, and then continued through my camp until I could no longer hear it as it moved down the creek bed. I've camped several times since then, not in that location, as I am too uncomfortable, and have not encountered anything close to that feeling of dread again. A bunch of family members and I were camping at the edge of a campground near a very large and pretty well-known lake surrounded by hundreds of square miles of state-protected land. This place has many campgrounds, but we were in the farthest one from any type of civilization. It was right up against the edge of the state-protected land, where there is literally nothing but unbroken forest for at least a few hundred miles and people aren't allowed. We were there during a time of the season where it rains a lot and isn't very popular for camping, so there were only a few other people there, with nobody in between us and the forest. About 2 a.m. one night, most of us were woken up by extremely loud knocks sounding like someone was slamming into trees with a large wooden baseball bat far into the forest. The knocks and the echoes from them made it obvious that they were definitely coming from very far away, but they were still so extremely loud that it sounded like, if it were to be done by a person, they would have had to be right next to us and using all of their strength. I know that there were no humans, no roads, and no machinery anywhere in that direction because it was such highly protected land. There is absolutely no way that any human could be strong enough to be knocking that loudly, and there's only one animal I know of that could be strong enough and is known for knocking on trees. We all agree that we heard a Sasquatch that night. When I was younger, around 14 or 15 years old, my family used to camp at a state park. Every night, my friend and I would walk through the woods. We called this the ritual. This particular night, we decided to walk further into the woods than usual. We had flashlights, and we liked to try and navigate through the woods with them turned off. We were about half a mile from the nearest campsite when we heard soft whispering behind us. Obviously, we hit the flashlights and spun around. I didn't see anything. So we kept walking, and we heard it again. This time we stopped and looked around a bit before we decided to head back to our campsite. Then we see what's whispering. It's a lady crawling on the ground, whispering just random words. She was wearing dark clothes and was covered in dirt. When she sees that we notice her, she stands up and declares that she is looking for her campsite. We ended up walking her back to the campground and trying to help her find her group. It turns out she was just super drunk or high and got lost trying to find a bathroom. Her friends didn't even notice she was missing, and if we hadn't gone that far into the woods, she would have been lost all night. It was pretty creepy. I was camping in a valley by myself with no cell service. I stayed late on a trail and ran into a nice local dude as it was getting dark. He showed me a local camping spot close to the road and the river, but camouflaged. I had a fire, drank beer, and listened to my friend's comedy podcast. I was loud and visible. Because it was already dark, I decided to sleep in the back of my truck under my topper next to all of my gear, as opposed to setting up my tent. The next morning I made a fire, cracked a beer, and started making breakfast. Then I noticed that there is a man at the edge of my camp. He comes closer but never looks directly at me. This dude looks homeless, has a long, ratty beard, and has at least a hundred plastic grocery bags tied all over his clothes. I comment about how nice the day is. There was no response from him. I offer him breakfast and nothing else. He sort of paces around the perimeter of my camp. I offer him a beer. But he just turns around. The dude is just standing there, back to me, wandering around. I'm realizing that there aren't going to be any good happenings. I had my bear spray and buck knife super close. I give him an ultimatum, Mother Ducker, you are either going to acknowledge me or leave immediately. He ignores me. I grab the bear mace and walk a few steps towards him. He sulked away, and I threw my shit in my truck and left that place right away. I wonder if he watched me during the night, and I thank my laziness for staying in my truck instead of a tent. In the late 80s, I was in my early 20s, and two friends and I went camping in Central Florida. Two of us were working for the park service at that time, so we were able to camp for free in other parks in the state. Both of us had done a lot of camping before, I grew up camping with my family on every single vacation, all over the state. For the other friend with us, this was her first camping trip ever. We were camping in the youth area which was empty that weekend and was quieter and more isolated than the regular campsites. Later in the afternoon, on the second day of our trip, we were all sort of spread out in the area of the campsite, being within shouting distance but enjoying a little solitude. 
I was collecting firewood. Every now and then, I'd kind of feel like someone was watching me. I'd look around, see and hear nothing, and then shrug it off and go back to what I was doing. Later on, around sunset, the bonfire started. One of the rangers who lived on site about a quarter mile away came over with a truckload of firewood and a six-pack of beer. We all sat around talking for a while. Well, after dark, we could suddenly hear what was probably a bunch of teenagers fooling around on one of the trails a couple miles away. Since the trails were closed at sunset, the ranger and my co-worker drove off to shoot them back to their campsites. My other friend and I were just relaxing around the fire, talking a little, mostly enjoying the night and the peace and quiet. All of a sudden I had a cold chill go over me, the hair stood up on the back of my neck, and out of nowhere I was terrified. I tried to ignore it, but it kept building. I didn't say anything to my friend, I didn't want to scare her. Then I glanced over at her just as she glanced at me, and she said, do you feel that? I said, yeah, I think maybe we'd better go to the car. We both felt like we were in deadly danger, but we had no idea from what. We started walking at a casual pace, not wanting to appear scared. Then, Halfway to the car, we looked at each other again and simultaneously broke into a dead run. We reached the car, jumped in, locked the doors, and turned on the headlights. I sat there with my pistol, feeling like it was totally inadequate for whatever was out there. We both just sat looking straight ahead, we were afraid to look around. I had the feeling at one point that if I turned my head and looked out the window, I'd see something that would drive me insane. I don't know how long we sat there. It was probably just a few minutes, but it felt like forever. Then it just left. We could actually feel it going away. A few minutes after that, the other two came back in the truck. We kind of laughed it off afterward, but I'll tell you, I've never been that scared before or since. I've faced a lot in my life, and nothing has completely terrified me like that. I don't know what it was, but I'm still convinced we were in terrible danger. I had moved to Southeast Washington for work after college. The Blue Mountains were very close by, and being a hunter, I was very interested in learning about the land for hunting season. I went on several solo scouting trips into various areas, always picking locations that would put me the farthest from any public road or access point. I find in hunting that most people are too lazy to get much off the roads, so there is less competition in the remote areas. Being outdoors has never been anything new to me. I grew up on a farm and ranch in Montana and have spent most of my youth working outside and dealing with animals. I have a very trained ear for animal calls. So I set out one afternoon to run up the blues to scout for the game. I got a late start, but no real worries as most of the spotting of animal activity occurs at first and last light. I was able to only hike a couple miles from the road before I needed to find a spot to camp and watch for game. I climbed up a ridge and found a small, somewhat level spot to set camp. I kept a dry camp, no fire, and just turned in early for the night to get a good start in the morning. I was awoken at about 1am to probably the worst headache I have ever had. It would be just a surge of pain, then taper off, then come back. I was very careful about my hydration on the pack-in, so I knew it wasn't dehydration, about my only real concern on the trip. So I'm lying in my bivy, with this on again, off again pulse of pain, trying my best to diagnose the cause, when my ears finally tuned to this strange sound coming from the mountainside above me. My thoughts move from the headache to this animal call. It's not matching any of the calls I know of. It's not matching any of the general patterns I know. It's too loud and repetitive, it's unique, it's very, very strange. I know instantly that this is a large mammalian call. You can say, how do I know that? And all I can say is that I have a lifetime experience like I stated above. It's definitely a mammal, it's big, with a deep, hollow vocal chamber, and although this is evident, I tell myself it is likely some WA bird to ease my mind. After all, Washington must have different birds than Montana. So now I'm stuck because if I focus on the sound, I can't believe my bullshit that it is a bird, and as soon as I try to not think about the sound, the surging pain of my headache is unbearable. Close to 2 a.m., I make a judgment call, pull camp, and head back to the truck, with this call repeating the whole time before this decision. The way I hiked to my camp was pretty direct but rough, however, there was a gated road just above my camp that circled back to the main road where my truck was parked. The distance would be longer to follow the road, but easier to travel at night. Also, it led me directly towards this call before it would start to circle back to the truck. So with my 1911 in hand, I walked that road out. The interesting part is that the sound stayed above me as I walked out, always directly up the mountainside, and after climbing up to the road, it was only maybe 200 to 300 yards away. The animal clearly shadowed my departure, following along up the mountain a ways. As soon as I dropped down out of the mountains, my headache completely cleared. 
I have since decided this was likely attributed to altitude sickness, since I was also having a hard time regulating my breathing. The real fun came when I got home and had to start searching for bird sounds in Washington. At this point, it was about 3 to 4 a.m. My search was not producing anything close to what I had heard. That small, nagging voice finally had me search Bigfoot call, and damn if I didn't find an audio file of what I had just heard almost instantly. That call was so unique that on my drive home, I grabbed a mouth read and was able to duplicate it quite quickly. There is no doubt in my mind about what I heard. Of course, I have doubts about any sound on the internet labeled Bigfoot whoops, because who can say what call a mythological creature really makes, and how could you ever be sure? I can say that I never heard it again, even on return trips to that area. I even walked through the area it originated from, and it was a thick, nasty north slope face full of trees and vegetation. I am from Roswell, New Mexico. Born and raised. I grew up dealing with bullshit alien nonsense my entire life. The whole town is a tourist attraction for people who believe in aliens and believe there actually was a UFO that crashed here in the early 1950s. I am a very logical thinker and have had many strange things happen to me in the past. I was camping with my cousin, 17 at the time, the same age as I was, his little brother Nick, 12, and my aunt and uncle. We were near Cloudcroft, New Mexico, up in the mountains. My uncle had just bought a new camper, and we decided to go camping with it for the weekend. We set up our tent about 60 yards away from the camper and the fire that was right outside of it. Towards the end of the first night, and after a long day of exploring, we all decided to lay down for the night. At about 3 a.m., the fire was completely out. My cousins and I were still awake. All of a sudden we heard a blood-curdling scream from the distance, probably the same distance away the camper was, only in the opposite direction. Me and Cam both picked our heads up off the pillow and said almost simultaneously, what the duck was that? It wasn't a bear, it wasn't a fox, it was big. The closest way I know how to describe it is as a mixture between a banshee and a rabid peacock. Its voice was deep and echoed through the deep woods. It let out another blood-curdling shriek, and we both sat upright on our blow-up mattress. Immediately after the screech, it started clicking. An odd, deep, clicking sound came from the back of its throat. It was heavy enough to hear from the distance too. We were scared, and neither of us had any idea what it could be. We waited a second, both quiet as a mouse. It let out another scream, followed by a series of clicks, but it seemed to be closer now. Maybe 10 yards closer. I looked at Cam, and he looked just as shocked as I was. I was trying to convince myself it was a bird of some sort or a mountain cat, then I heard it walking. It was walking on two feet, and I could distinctly hear it. It even sounded big, taking huge strides and cracking branches and leaves under its feet as it walked. It sounded like it was coming close to us. It screeched or clicked loudly again, I could tell it was about halfway to us now. Suddenly, another scream or click came from another direction, sounding just as close as the other creature. It sounded more aggressive, angry, and dominant. The first creature then let off a series of clicks too. Then it hit me, they were communicating. At this point, I was terrified, and so was Cam. I had an axe under my blow-up mattress, but I was afraid to get up and grab it. Then, both of the creatures started walking towards us. Both on two legs. They were not screaming or clicking, but it sounded like they were trying to sneak up on our tent. They were both walking closer and closer to the tent. I could hear them both stepping on limbs and leaves, but I could feel the ground thud with each step they took. I was panicking, frantically looking for my axe, while Cam was frantically trying to wake up his little brother. I couldn't find my axe anywhere. I realized I had left it near the campfire because we were using it to cut pieces of wood for the fire. Nick was not waking up, and they were getting closer and closer to the tent. Eventually, me and Cam froze. The second one had stopped about 10 feet away from the tent, but the first one was walking right up to the tent. As soon as it was right outside the tent, I yelled as loud as I could, out of pure fear get a duck away from here, Levus alone. It stopped. It was right outside. I could almost see it through the tent. It was huge. Tall enough to lean over and look through the top of the tent if it wanted to. I could tell it was slim, and the creature was heavy because of how tall it was. I could feel its energy, and it was very negative. I felt the vibes of the universe, and they were telling me that whatever these things were, they were not there to just say hi or steal our hot dogs. I was frozen. They were right outside and the moon was covered by clouds, so moonlight was no longer shining anywhere. I couldn't even hear it breathing. It was silent. The second one clicked from behind us, still ten feet away or so from the tent. The first didn't move. It didn't make a single sound, and it was probably a foot away from the tent. My heart was beating so hard that I thought I was going to pass out. 
All of a sudden, it took two huge steps back, and the second one let out a scream so loud it hurt my ears. I immediately burst into tears. The second creature took off into the woods, pounding the ground underneath it and running on two legs faster than Usain Bolt himself. The first one apparently turned around and walked back into the deep woods. I waited until I completely heard its footsteps disappear until I unzipped the tent, threw little Nick over my shoulder, and we booked it towards the camper. We got inside and woke up my aunt and uncle. They had no idea what was going on, and they urged us to take our asses to bed. We slept in the camper the next two nights, and I didn't leave the campsite for the rest of the trip. I don't know what we encountered that night, but all I know is that it was not of this kind. It was not human, not a bear, not a four-legged animal, and it was definitely not a rabid peacock. It has scarred me ever since, and its energy and screams still haunt me to this day. I lived in a very small town once when I worked for my laptop. Like, population 200 is small. I was in a small cabin in the woods, though next to the highway. One day I was walking my dog and heard two gunshots somewhere nearby. I didn't think much of it, it's a hunting area, and it's kind of redneck-like. The next day, or the day after, a truck pulls up. I don't even know anyone in this town, so it's weird, and I'm put off. A guy calls me over and says he's my neighbor. Asks if I heard the shots. I said yeah. He claims it was his neighbor taking pot shots at his house over a land dispute. It doesn't ask me to be a witness for him or anything, just if I heard. Okay, it seems really odd to me. I have never met this guy before, and when I say neighbor, I mean 500 meters to 1 kilometer away out of sight. Guy sees my dog digging somewhere unimportant, and all of a sudden he starts trying to tell her not to do that. He walks out, and she is suspicious of him. He says, here watch, and calls her over. Grabs her and tries to do the stupid ducking Cesar Chavez dominance, holding the dog on their backs, for really no ducking reason. She starts yelping, I'm like, dude, stop. He asks me whether I have any guns myself, and I say no. He says he is a great dog trainer. He asks me to go over and mow his lawn and says, please ensure to bring your dog. In the strangest way, just like that please ensure you bring, my dog's name. I can't describe it, but his mannerisms and the way he talked were just plain creepy, especially that line. He leaves soon after, and I'm thinking. Duck, I just told this guy not only that I heard the gunshots but that I'm unarmed here. How do I even know it was his neighbor, like he claimed, and not in fact that this weird dude has shot someone at his home and is trying to see who might have eared or witnessed it. I wouldn't go to his house, not a ducking chance. Horrible feeling. Then he kept showing up, asking why. Calling and texting, asking why, I gave him my number before realizing how weird he was. I am really adamant that I go over there. It turns out the guy is a total alpha, he lost his wife, lost his job, lost everything, a very dangerous mental state. There is nothing to lose. The small store owners in town explain the guy to me. He's apparently the most hated guy in the valley. Bad reputation. I'm now really freaked out. I found it very hard to sleep after that. Cabin in the woods, nobody nearby that would hear any commotion, ample angles for the place to be approached from the woods, and just a can of bear spray and a knife. And the guy knows I have no guns. I would be kept up for hours listening at night to any movement outside, as it was dead silent there. One night, in the middle of the night, my dog started to growl. Then she growls more. I didn't hear anything, but it didn't matter. Every room in that cabin had a window except the bathroom. I just got up, grabbed the knife and bear spray, and locked myself in that ducking bathroom for hours, listening. I think I eventually fell asleep in there. I don't think I've ever felt that kind of dread. I just pictured this lunatic sneaking up with a shotgun to take me out, maybe having heard him murder someone with a gun days earlier. Duck, it was just awful. I moved, but unfortunately the new landlords were equally creepy and even started trying to steal my dog, even though they had three, literally, I heard them discussing it, how they had to make themselves the in crowd so that she'd want to be with them, and hand feeding her dog food when they thought I wasn't looking. It must have just been the small town thing, there were totally strange people in that town for the most part. They went to market one morning. I packed all my shit into my uninsured van with no license, and my pup bailed out of town and never looked back. Good God, it was Hills Have Eyes shipmates. My buddy was camping in northern Ontario about a decade ago. It was him and one other guy. Everything was going great. They caught a bunch of fish and fried some up for dinner. They hung up the rest of the catch in the trees for the evening. The sun was down, and they were relaxing. As they sat by the fire, they heard sounds coming from the bush. There were normal animal sounds, leaves crunching, twigs snapping. Easily a squirrel or raccoon. But there were also strange laughing sounds. 
my buddy looks in his periphery and sees what he describes as a little Spider-Man. His camping partner sees the same thing, a little, human-like figure, like a hunched dwarf. They get spooked and run a few meters from camp. When they return, all the fish are gone from the trees. In only a matter of a few minutes. This, by itself, is not that scary. It could have been a raccoon, a porcupine, whatever. The eyes play tricks, and my buddy is a scientist, so he is not easily swayed by extraordinary explanations. Fast forward to me in the Ontario archives doing research for my dissertation. I came across an interview with early 20th century explorer Ernest Oberholzer. He recounts stories from his indigenous travel companion and guide, Atu Kamau and Tatapaswer Betten or Billy McGee, who said the Anishinaabeg people north of Lake Superior spoke of Mishifasu or Mama Sea, which were little people or dwarves who made strange sounds and played tricks on people. Same area where my buddy was camping. Similar descriptions I immediately messaged my buddy. If anything, it's a fun story, but creepy if we let our imaginations run wild. I work as a counselor at a summer camp in Southern California. The place is very out in the woods, so we get all sorts of animals wandering through, from deer and foxes to coyotes howling in the distance to a mountain lion that's been spotted in the area. The camp also occasionally has a spiritual or haunted vibe. There are a couple creepy and weird spots, some things in the area that we think show the place has been inhabited in the past, ghost stories, etc. One night after putting my kids to bed, I was standing outside our cabin talking to another counselor when my friend Sadie came running by with her entire teenage girl's cabin, maybe 12 of them, all dressed in black and freaking the duck out. She screams at me that she thought they heard a ghost, and once her kids were asleep, she'd meet me back here to explain and investigate. Sadie is normally the level-headed type not to freak out easily, so this really caught my attention. She meets me back by my cabin, maybe 30 minutes later, and explains what was going on. She took her campers on a night hike and had them all dress up in black and pretend to be ninjas. All was fun until, on their way back, they passed a particularly dark part of the trail when they heard off in the distance, just beyond the tree line, what sounded like a faint help. From a small child, but each time they heard it, it got more and more distorted until it no longer sounded human, yet still sounded like a child yelling help in the distance. Naturally, they freaked the duck out and ran. Me and Sadie decide to be good counselors and go investigate the sound of a small child elling. As we walk over to the area of the trail, we hear it. It didn't sound like a small child anymore. It sounded like a demon screeching out its best impression of a child, and it didn't sound like it was coming from any point source but more like coming from an entire mountainside. We booked it back to the safety of the main part of camp, where we tell this story to anyone who will listen. The next day, the camp director had a meeting where they told us to tell our campers not to freak out at the sound of bobcats in the forest, they are harmless but do make a high-pitched yelping sound at night. Our friends wouldn't let us live that one down all summer. I was hiking on a decommissioned forest service trail in the backcountry with my boyfriend. We were going on the rainy side of the ridge, but it was still pretty hot that day. We went through all our water on the first half of the hike and still had a couple miles to go before we reached the lake. Even though we were in pretty decent shape, it was a fairly demanding elevation climb. As we reached the top of the ridge, we came across another hiker, we weren't expecting this on a decommissioned trail, we weren't even supposed to be there. He was an elderly gentleman in his late 60s and early 70s. He had a vintage wool cap on and a heavy red flannel jacket, the kind woodsmen wore in the 1960s. He was pushing an odeograph wheel along the ground. I noticed he was carrying a variety of other measuring tools tucked into his pockets. I figured that explained his unseasonably warm attire. In the age of GPS, it was strange to see someone packing old school analog tools, but not unheard of. GPS reception was spotty in the mountains, and the old timers don't trust it. Nonetheless, I was surprised to see an older person out there on such challenging terrain. As we were about to pass, I smiled and greeted him. I asked, how's it looking on top? He paused briefly, and his eyes met mine. They were striking, even though his thick horn-rimmed lenses there's a storm coming. I'm not sure I'd go past the timber too far. They've really let this trail go to hell. I'm going to take this up with the chief. You take care. And he continued on. He didn't say boo to my boyfriend. We exchange puzzled glances. I'm concerned about a little old man, who seems a little senile, out there. As soon as he's out of earshot, I whisper to my boyfriend that we should backtrack a little just to make sure he's not lost. He agrees, and we turn to follow him. He passed a bend through some bushes and vanished. We looked and looked and listened, but there was nothing. At this point, I'm worried he fell into the steep terrain, so we continued down the mountain, retracing our steps, looking for him. It's as if he had never been there. At this point, we're both worried. 
so we go all the way down and back to the pullout in the road where we parked. There were no other cars. There were no other places to park. No other cars were there when we started, and there are none now. Then the hail started. It had been clear skies and warm just minutes prior. It was so bad that we ran for the car to get some cover. Finally, we decided it would be best to get some help. So we drove about 10 miles up the road to a gas station. It's a rural area, so we figured the locals would probably have some idea of who he was. We asked the attendant at the station, and he just laughed, oh, you saw him, too. We've all seen him. He shakes his head. You know the name of the lake up there? No, I tell me. He chuckled and said, it's old man lake. I still don't know if he was trolling us or what, but it was the weirdest thing. I won't call it creepy, but strange. Also, the natives have legends about spirits in the woods. Their people regard those lands as a gateway to the spirit world. Apparitions appear to people from all time periods and cultures. My boyfriend and I could never agree on the details of the man's appearance, even though we were both standing right there. I'm not saying I do or don't believe the legends, I'm agnostic about those sorts of things, but it's hard for me to explain rationally.